tech panel, which is coming up right now, is going to deliberate on what will it take to strengthen Bengaluru's position as a leading tech and entrepreneurship hub, and um, how can we set ourselves to a leadership position to deliberate this. I'd like to call our panelists up on stage. Our first panelist. Now, don't let that uh, background in graphic design and animation mislead you. He's a three-time MLA leading Karnataka's IT and BT mandate for the second time. He's credited for rolling out some marquee programs that all of us have engaged with, the Startup Booster Kit, Elevate 100, and Grand Challenges. So please put your hands together and join me in welcoming on stage Priyank Karge. Our next panelist is a business leader and entrepreneur with over 30 years of experience in specialization in products and product engineering in cutting-edge tech. He is the CEO of QNU Labs, and they have developed India's first commercially ready quantum-safe security products and solutions. But he's also built an ecosystem consisting of academia, technology partners, and suppliers to develop a fully indigenized product. Ladies and gentlemen, Sunil Kumar Gupta for all of us. So. Now, he is an entrepreneur for entrepreneurs. He serves on the Global Board of Trustees for TIE, the Indus Entrepreneurs, and he's also the Honorary President of TIE Bengaluru. Now, he co-founded MeritTrack, that's India's first skills assessment company that was later acquired by Manipal Education. He's also the founder of and the CEO of OneBridge, which is an ONDC-ready rural commerce platform that's already serving over 20,000 villages. He's also the founder and managing trustee of Head Held High Foundation. Now, that's a nonprofit that aims to make rural youth confident entrepreneurs, and he's also a co-founder for the Global Alliance for Mass Entrepreneurship Game, and that's an alliance for igniting a mass entrepreneurship movement. Please welcome on stage Madan Pariki. And our host for this panel is the MD and CEO of Mercedes-Benz Research and Development India, and he leads the largest R&D setup for the Mercedes-Benz Group outside of Germany. Now, he's got over three decades of experience in automobile innovation engineering, and he leads a team of over 9,000 engineers who are engaged in accelerating the future of smart and sustainable mobility and also delivering world-class solutions across global products. I'd like to hand the stage over to Manu Saleh. Manu? So, good morning, everyone. Um, last year, we were just before lunch and you. This year, we're lucky to be one panel away from lunch. So, about 30, 40 minutes to go, and uh, a very, very interesting topic for Bengaluru. Tech, deep tech, and uh, what makes Bengaluru so special. We at Mercedes-Benz uh, have also been associated with this event for the last three years. Uh, thank you, Shankar, for that. And it's a pleasure to sit here and discuss what makes Bangalore so special when it comes to tech? What are the ingredients of this magic formula? And uh, I have a very august panel. Thank you, uh, Mr. Minister, Sunil and uh, Madan, a dear friend. So I want to spend some time sharing with you, with us, uh, what makes Bangalore special. You probably hailed a ride to come here. You probably ordered your breakfast on Swiggy or another app. And for every service that you want to think about, it's not uncommon to look at your smartphone and see if there's a service that's already available. If this is the world of consumers, it, within the four walls of corporates, we also do the same things. If it comes to auto engineering, something I was uh, sharing with Kargeji just now, if it comes to healthcare, as you saw the doc speak about, or if the two founders and entrepreneurs here uh, talk about, behind the scenes, within four walls, Tech plays a major role in how Bangalore ticks. Always been considered in the top five cities, especially tech cities in the world. One million or more software professionals around us for the density that we have. That technically means that everybody you're rubbing shoulders with in the metro, in a BMTC, in a supermarket, one in 10, if I go with 10 million people in the city, is probably thinking about software and code in the city, which makes it super special. Now, I was chatting with the panel on email uh, the last two days, and we came up with a couple of themes. What does it really take to make this city so special? 
We've been here 28 years now um, at Bangalore, headquartered here in Bangalore. It is the largest, as Ashwin was kind enough to point out, R&D center, former series outside of Germany. And we are enjoying, if you may, the magic ingredients of Bangalore for ourselves as well. We're going to talk about a couple of themes with our panel today. One of them surely is the entrepreneurial spirit. Two of them have already, three of them actually, including the minister, has uh, tried out these things in various forms of the industry before. We are going to talk about talent, something that Bangalore is so much known for. We're going to talk about access to capital. We're going to talk about networking opportunities. And I'd like to start there, Madan, maybe with you. Entrepreneurship was mentioned multiple times today. You've been dabbling with it for more than two decades yourself. If I were to ask you for a, I don't know, a meter of, you know, zero to 100, and pick Bengaluru 2024, on that uh, meter of entrepreneurship. Where would you pick it now and why? Thanks, Manu Eldu Namaskara. Delighted to be here. Uh, jumping into that question, you know, again, I started out my journey in 2000. My dad was a travel agent uh, with absolutely no clue whatsoever of what entrepreneurship meant. We jumped in. Our first investor, angel investor, was a farmer from Shimoga. So if I were to look back then and say on a scale of 1 to 100, Bangalore was probably at a 10, I would probably put that at about 70 or 75 now, right, in the last 20, 25 years. Uh, and I'll explain why. For me, Bangalore is just not a, a city of entrepreneurship. It's the emotion of entrepreneurship that pervades here, right? Especially the last 10 years, uh, we're seeing what I call as this democratization of entrepreneurship. You know, morning uh, Dr. Ballal showed the champagne glass where 80%, uh, the top 80% uh, of the wealth is with the top 20% or whatever, right? So it's no longer just that unicorn startup. We are seeing the percolation of the startup happening, the thinking, the entrepreneurial thinking happening right through the spectrum. Example, you know, just a few weeks ago, I was in an auto uh, in Amayatri, uh, uh, app which I used an auto for a ride and through the through the auto ride I was talking to some entrepreneur on investment and stuff like that the auto driver at the end of the ride come, turns back and says sir you entrepreneur ha? you startup ha? I said how the path so now on laksha hakpada sir ilara atta. right I think that to me is the spirit of entrepreneurship of course I dissuaded him to say you know be very careful but that point that I can still be a part of this entrepreneurial ecosystem. And I'm BTSI, recently we had the Bangalore Tech Summit. For me, the highlight of that summit was six government school students from Katridhardi in uh, Belgavi district, now Karsidvi. Uh, eight standard kids had innovated and built a light writer pen. So basically, a Halili current hodaga, how do I use, uh, you know, a pen that lights up? and write so that I can, I don't have to waste time. And those kids came and made a presentation in front of 300 people. And the confidence that which they talked about that innovation to me is Bangalore. Right? So I think we are at a cusp, and if I were to project it to 2040, how do you light up the city with the spirit of innovation, the spirit of entrepreneurship? And how do you light up the state? And how can we use Bengaluru as the fulcrum to do that uh, is the thought I want to leave. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Madan. Um, Kargeji, 75 is where Madan pegs entrepreneurial spirit in Bangalore. You've seen Bangalore for a long time now, uh, both in the government and outside, yourself being an entrepreneur too. What are, what are the things about this city and how can we leverage more, especially, especially towards 2040? Uh, firstly, I'd like to congratulate uh, the Kinnerol for 75 years of their uh, being in uh, existence in public service and uh, also it's a great uh, conclave here for uh, having a vision for 2040. Picking up from where uh, Madan left, uh, Bengaluru actually I don't think many people realize has always been an entrepreneurial city. So although it dates back to 9th century, more or less everybody agrees that Kempe Gauda is the founder of it. So why did uh, Kempe Gauda, how did he build this city? He built this city as a transit port for trade and commerce. 
So it's whether it is Bale Pete, Aki Pete, Upar Pete, Gangir Pete, Dod Pete, Chik Pete, what are all these? They're all what you call now economic zones. In the 16th century, he had come up with this concept of things. So basically the, uh, the trade, commerce, the economics part and the entrepreneurship part, I very strongly believe was laid long time back, which we have uh, graduated to innovations now. So <clears throat> I think uh, the, that spirit of entrepreneurship that has been here, uh, post that came your independence, this thing, and then your PSUs got, a lot of PSUs got established. So most of these um, second generation of uh, employees of the PSUs became engineers because the landscape, the education landscape opened up. We have more than 243 uh, engineering colleges, 70 medical colleges, 1,777 ITIs, GTTs. So, you know, always Bengaluru and Karnataka have been, has given great focus to these things, always uh, adapted very well for entrepreneurship and trade and commerce. And I think that's exactly what uh, the successive governments also have uh, done here. So if you ask me to rate um, the spirit of entrepreneurship in uh, uh, Karnataka, I think I would go a little higher, close to year around 85, 90. Like he said earlier, when um, in the 80s, 90s, uh, when you would be looking for um, a groom, if you say, uh, infosis nal kelsa matta, then vipro nal kelsa matta, it means marriage was 100% uh, fixed. Now, you, uh, now they say infosis, vipro, I mean, a service sector, nobody really bothers. They, when you say you're an entrepreneur, they, when you say you have a startup, they'll ask, stay kishto. <laughs> <laughs> so we have moved on, and I think uh, successive governments have played a great role. And the uh, government of Karnataka also is. Uh, uh, firmly kindling that uh, spirit by focusing heavily and investing heavily in uh, skilling, in incubation, uh, that leads to R&D, that would lead to innovations. So if you see our uh, various uh, schemes or uh, policies that we make, it's very, very agile so that uh, we groom the human resource uh, that is available in the state for uh, entrepreneurship uh, spirit. So if, uh, whether it's our uh, Beyond Bengaluru policy or whether it's our startup policy, I mean, you'll be quite surprised that uh, the government of Karnataka has given grants to more than 900 startups. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think any state or any private VC also has done so much. So, of course, these are all uh, uh, always a work in progress and we're doing that. But I think the credit goes to the the great human resource that is available here, the talent that is available here, the people that have been grooming such uh, talent over here. Thank you, thank you, sir. Um, the minister ended with the word talent, and I think uh, Bangalore certainly thrives on the talent that it's been, let's say, um, harnessing, it's been uh, hosting. It's not uncommon, some years ago, I don't know if it's still true with uh, post-COVID, uh, that most colleges, universities, um, the buzz around students was engineering Moksi Bangalore Gogana, right? It's the place people wanted to really come in for the kind of culture that we have, we've had, for the kind of facilities around, and most importantly, for the career opportunities that the city provided. Um, we'll, we'll address the talent question a little bit. A million and a half graduates coming out, close to 100,000 in Bangalore is what I hear that they all land up with. Uh, one third of all tech talent in the country. In the country, that's even more uh, you know, mind boggling. Um, and like I said, a million graduates already on their jobs here, talking software, talking tech, deep tech, all of that. I'll continue with you, Kargeji. One of the observations we've had from the corporate is, COVID changed that a little bit. This influx into Bangalore. Now as a Bangalorean, I don't know if I should be happy about it, considering the strain it had on resources, or as a corporate businessman said about it because the talent isn't really coming into town as much as it did in the past. In the recent past, we've also seen announcements of corporate going in search of talent to other towns, notably other large cities in and around Karnataka, right? How do you see it and what can we do to address that if you want to stay on, on course with 2040? Well, uh, we have a policy called Beyond Bengaluru as well where we're trying to push uh, investments 
uh, and industries outside Bengaluru. So we want to build satellite uh, towns around Bengaluru and also have anchor uh, cities like uh, Belgavi, Mangluru, Mysuru, uh, Kalburgi as well. And so we have uh, identified the sectors which they would naturally blend in. So Mangluru has a great animation um, uh, ecosystem. They have a great finance, fintech ecosystem. They have a great uh, f uh, marine bi biotech ecosystem. So we need to uh, make it niche. So Belgavi has an EV and manufacturing ecosystem. You'll be quite surprised that the entire ecosystem came up and said, like, you give us 10 acres of land, we will go vertical and we'll, uh, we'll have some centers of excellence which will uh, uh, groom and uh, nurture leadership in uh, EV manufacturing or EV software. Uh, similarly, Mysore is emerging out as a great uh, GCC hub. Uh, as well as uh, cyber uh, security. So uh, we need as a government to identify these uh, sectors and we need to ensure that uh, we get in the right kind of uh, training and uh, for these uh, for talent grooming here so that you know that we nurture leadership and uh, entrepreneurship in these uh, sectors. So uh, post-COVID also has given us a lot of uh, scope for people to reskill themselves, relearn. So we, we are very uh, agile with respect to that. We have formed a, a, a council, a skill council for emerging technologies. So we are sector agnostic. So tomorrow if Mercedes wants uh, 500 people trained in um, a, a particular skill sets, we'll be more than happy to train it for you as long as you're promising them employment or employability. So not necessarily they might be absorbed into Mercedes. Maybe Volkswagen will take them or uh, uh, Suzuki will take them. So, so we are working things out. We are working very closely with the industry. We are working very closely with, with the academia. We are trying to push, uh, we are trying to retain talent there itself so that uh, they don't really have to come to uh, Bengaluru. But uh, we have policies, we have schemes. But uh, everybody loves Bangalore. If Mercedes wants to come to Kalburgi, tomorrow itself I'll have a lot land for you. <laughs> but My team is here to make a note of that. <laughs> but the problem is more of, it's aspirational also. Like you said, engineering muktakshana, Bangalore gogana. People like the, that uh, thing. Uh, it's a more of aspirational when it comes to the uh, students. And uh, for you, for uh, investors, it's like, okay, Bangalore is good weather-wise and otherwise, so let's stay put. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. I think the, the Bengaluru that uh, the Infosys, Wipro's and Texas Instruments discovered in the 90s and brought to the world's attention was doing on their computers something very different in the 90s than what they're doing today. There's been a move up in the value curve from you know, back office testing, slowly over development, thinking about customers, and finally to a more solution oriented. If you go to any corporate, they'll have a curve that says we want to move from left and shift right eventually to do more value-added things. Sunil, you're doing something totally wild, quantum computing, right? Um, while still the rest of the industry that's discovering India and Bangalore is starting from the back office, you've zoomed past all of that. How do you find talent in Bengaluru? How do you groom them? Do you bring them from outside? Are they found here? Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> So, uh, so I'll just tell you a little story there. Uh, when we started in 2016, we were incubated in IT Madras, but very we quickly moved to Bangalore because we thought that is the best place for us to, to, to get the talent. And uh, so, of course, when we started, you go and talk to different people and take consulting. So a lot of people told me that you're doing a very stupid thing, that you're doing it, uh, you're trying to build a quantum tech company in India, and that also in Bangalore. Why don't you go to US? Right? Because they, and they told me that three things, you don't know, you won't get it here. You won't get uh, people, uh, you won't get uh, money, funds, and you won't get market. So we said, okay, everybody can do it in U.S. So we are going to, we are entrepreneurs also by nature are contrarians, right? So we'll do difficult things, risky things. And, uh, and we started our journey, but today I can tell you that, uh, of course, I will answer your question specifically. We have 100 people working for us in Bangalore. Right, all the resources uh, from from Bangalore and few in few in other other part of the uh, the country, we raise funds all from Indian investors in Bangalore, and uh, and then we created market in India. 
right? So, so Bangalore is, is, is a place that uh, really uh, makes your, uh, you know, I would say take big dreams. And it also gives you the, uh, the, the required momentum, you know, to your uh, flight. <laughs> now, coming to your um, specific question on talent, I moved 20 years ago from Delhi to, to Bangalore <laughs> because for tech people, I think this, uh, Bangalore is the right place. You can, of course, and the ecosystem, I think the beauty of Bangalore is the ecosystem that evolves here. It really makes you connect with the right people. It, it aspires you, right? There are a lot of uh, successful people here. And then, um, of course, uh, the, the, for us it was Bangalore ecosystem, deep tech, and then cutting edge technology in quantum. We could attract a lot of people internally, locally in Bangalore, and also from outside. Our, our plan was because when we started, there's no, no quantum tech professionals in, in India or, or in Bangalore. So our idea was that some of us who had worked in um, CDOT, I used to spend my early years uh, in, on Miller's, uh, Miller's Road uh, when I used to work for CDOT, right, here. So, so some of us friends who came together and we said, okay, let's build a, build a team. And then we went and reached out to our, our, our friends and uh, the people who worked for us. And then we actually tapped into a lot of good universities, right? And uh, there were a lot of good, uh, you know, people who were doing physics, right, in, uh, in B-Tech, M-Tech, and PhDs. Before quantum, they never had a, a great opportunity, right, to really find a place for themselves, right? Uh, computer science, uh, you know, electronics, they all people used to get employed very good. So we brought some of these good guys and we offered them internship, right? We brought them in, then offered them job. And I think that uh, that was the that that was the path that we took in terms of uh, building the building that the, the, the talent, right? And then it grew from there, right? <laughs> they attracted their friends. They said, "Oh, there's a great work happening here," because talent has a very interesting thing that if you get the right people and give them the right environment, they tend to breed other other talent as well, right? I think that's what uh, probably we did, and that is the beauty of Bangalore, right? Absolutely, absolutely. If I may add to that, you, you'll find it quite surprising that um, uh, in the next five to six years, 24.3% of the entire global workforce will have Indian talent. As of now, not a single architecture of a chip or a single uh, software that is, has a global release goes, is released globally without a line written by a Kannadiga. We should celebrate that. <laughs> big, give it a big round of applause. We, we have our way of saying it too in the company for uh, the ones who get excited. We say there's a little bit of India in every Mercedes. A little bit um, of Karnataka. little bit of India, so, Karnataka. Why, why right? I'm a little bullish can, on this is... You can say a little bit of Bengaluru in every Mercedes, yeah, yeah. So, right? So the reason I'm bullish on this, recently I was in the uh, uh, U.S. with Mr. Uh, M.B. Patel, and in six days, I, we ha hopped on to the entire uh, the, uh, Bay Area of San Francisco. We had around 48 meetings. We met all the CEOs, VPs, CMDs. Everybody over there across the boardroom said one thing. Priyank, we are looking for talent. And when we say we are looking for talent, we, we are looking at India. And in India, we are looking at Karnataka. That's something that is across the board, across the board. Can, can only confirm that. Um, I'm part of the NASCOM year and council. And I can tell you, we meet a lot of companies that come in looking for Bengaluru, especially for talent, consulting us and asking us to share experiences. And destination number one, choice number one is all, always this city. I can also agree with Sunil. I mean, uh, Madan, is there any technology that Bengaluru is frightened to embrace? Uh, we are doing quantum, we should talk offline, and neuromorphic computing as well in uh, association with IASC here in town. Um, the cars have adopted both these technologies too. It's upcoming in five, seven years, you will see it way more prevalent. And we didn't bat an eyelid when we went to headquarters and said quantum computing, neuromorphic, Bangalore will do something. Are we frightened of anything at all here when it comes to tech? No, in fact, I think... Bangalore now should take the next one, where we should start inventing new technologies for the world, right? In fact, Dan, uh, you know, last year I was in Lucknow, and I met this 12th standard girl who was trying to build a, a startup in cybersecurity. At BTS, I bumped into her. She had come to the Thai stall, 
and she says, I've now shifted to Bangalore, I've pulled my parents here, I'm, I'm studying here, but I'm building a startup here, right? And I think that is the power uh, that Bangalore has, and I'm sure she will go on to kind of figure something out new in the next five years, that the world will say, hey, this is conceptualized in Bangalore, I think that's the next stage. So if you look at what, uh, you know, Priyanka, what you were saying as well, maybe there are uh, four evolutions, uh, Manu, right? In the early 2000, it was, built for the US, built by Bangalore. So that is a classic outsourcing model, right? In the post-COVID world, it will probably move to built, I mean, in the pre-COVID world, it was built in Bangalore, you know, built for Bangalore or wherever we started thinking about products. But the COVID world separated out the talent from the work, right? Today, a lot of us have people sitting in, in a Kalburgi, in a Belgao, Right? Where it is built for Bangalore, but built in Belgavi. Sure. Right? And eventually, when we start putting innovation out there, like the skits from Katrigedi that I talked about, the D that I talked about, it can be built in Belgavi, but built for the world. Absolutely. Right? And that's where truly the democratization of innovation and entrepreneurship happens. So how do we, through various policies that are being put out, push the envelope for decentralized, distributed models of innovation and entrepreneurship, rather than anchoring into just Bangalore as a physical center, I think that is the evolution that we should be yeah, thinking absolutely, about. Absolutely, right. Uh, just say that QNU Labs, they were, our, our tagline is made in India, made for the world. We take pride in saying that uh, we are the pioneer of quantum tech in India and we took India, Karnataka and Bangalore, we put it on the co quantum Lovely. world map of the world. Quantum map of the world. Beautiful. Right. So, Thank you. So, and, 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 and a lot of our solutions built in India, manufactured yeah. right here in Bangalore, software, hardware, and then we are now exporting and sending out to the rest of the world. Exactly. And the world is now looking up to India to see, hey, give us these products and we are securing the, the world encryption. Exactly. <laughs> so I, it's changing, as, as already we are there. Okay. If I connect what, uh, what we discussed just now and what Ashwin said at the top, uh, pensioners paradise and we really don't know when it shifted into the tech capital. And if I look at the room as well, there's a mixed audience and uh, Bangalore still has two identities. The old one is retained at homes nearly all homes, have still parents. My dad's been reading DH since 1962, moved into Bangalore, and a typical response is, Yen right? uh, we don't know what you guys are doing, but that fuzzy world of tech that we all deal with, nine to five, and then get back to the pensioners, Bangalore, that, that we are. The world is a stage, um, Belgavi to Bangalore, Bangalore to the world. We do develop apps and uh, sort customer issues out anywhere in the world sitting in Bangalore. It's been true for for the last decades. One critical piece that connects this, the solution-oriented work mindset here, to outside is infrastructure. We've seen the beautiful images of the airport already. We don't want to talk about roads here. I think we've used this stage to talk about the city's infrastructure before. But in a tech panel, let's talk about the digital infrastructure that's necessary. And I want to start with you, Kargeji. How do you view connectivity today and are there any plans to make this super highway, digital highway available for Bengaluru even more than it is today? Uh, well, I think as a uh, government, there's much more we can do. Although when um, we compare ourselves with uh, other states, we are way, way ahead when it comes to digital infrastructure for uh, government or for s uh, delivery of government services to citizens, but there's always uh, scope for uh, massive uh, improvement and massive overhauling of uh, the infrastructure that is uh, needed. And uh, that's always a constant work in progress because the technology keeps uh, changing. In fact, we also have a, a center of excellence uh, for efficiency augmentation, which will ensure the processes are much more better and much more precise. Uh, having said that, the digital infrastructure, not just for uh, the city, but also for the state is excellent. So I also do, uh, hold the portfolio for Panchayat Raj and uh, rural development. All the panchayats at the village levels are connected with both Wi-Fi and last mile connectivity. You will be quite surprised in our uh, citizen service center, what we call as the Bapu Seva Kendra, we have more than 700 services, citizen services online. That is not available in any of the uh, panchayats throughout the country. We are the only state that is delivering that. Having said that, the digital infrastructure within the government or within the state also needs uh, 
uh, a massive push from our end because, uh, uh, like I said, it's too, we are always playing catch, in, uh, catch up to uh, technology. So for that, we've also come up with the center of excellence for wireless and uh, wireless products. Uh, we've uh, also got the center of excellence for IoT. Uh, we've got the center of uh, excellence for even uh, where uh, uh, we are ensuring that uh, the process is followed by government for uh, digital cyber uh, security and forensic also is high. We have already the CISEC which is working on it. Now we want to make it uh, a little bigger so that you know we get uh, more innovation into it. And recently we have also uh, come up with a policy for uh, public procurement for startups. So if you have a separate uh, uh, IP product or an IP service uh, that government can use, to enhance their in digital infrastructure or their services, uh, we will be able to uh, onboard them at a, uh, I mean, as a pilot uh, project which was earlier not there. So uh, we are doing all we can to ensure that uh, the digital infrastructure matches up the pace of uh, the ecosystem. So we are no, see, we are, my competition, Karnataka does not compete with Chhattisgarh or with uh, Tamil Nadu or other. We are competing with China, Taiwan, everything. So when, uh, while here we are still uh, uh, experimenting with 6G or uh, 7G, they're already doing much more. You, you are much aware that they're 19, 20G or something else, they're uh, doing this. In every sector we need to be uh, this thing, right from when we say digital infrastructure for the government, right from agriculture to aerospace, we need to treat the each sector separately. We need to uh, pull up our socks uh, by engaging them, asking them what they need, and we need to build upon their things on a, either the government model where, uh, where uh, the agriculture, horticulture, sericulture, all these require a welfare kind of model, but whereas the other innovations require a PPP model where if I want to ensure better digital infrastructure for um, public transport, I need help from people or from people like uh, your company wherein uh, you have the, you have done the research, but we have the access to data, we have the access to get these things on scale. So I think uh, we need to engage with the private sector uh, more to understand uh, how we can cater to the digital infrastructure on uh, scale for the state. Thank you. Um, just, just for the audience, even our uh, corporate social responsibility initiatives are happening through startups. So we're not just writing out checks you know, to schools and to organizations. Uh, we are teaming up, I saw a colleague from WRI here, uh, he made a presentation to us. Uh, we are reaching out to people who are willing to solve those problems, real life, real life problems, yeah. and uh, give them access to our capital, call it CSR funds. Um, I'm going to take one or two questions from the audience for the panel, but before that, one last thing on stage, Madan. How is the access to capital otherwise for all the entrepreneurs, and can you introduce me to this auto driver who has this lack of rupees? Uh, how is the access to capital? Bangalore is anyway the natural magnet for any VCs. I think we have the largest concentration of uh, VC firms uh, in the country. Uh, it is the first port of call like the GCCs for any VC to have an address in Bangalore. But what we are also seeing is the emergence of a huge number of angel investors, the entire ecosystem, early stage funds, family offices that are looking at supporting uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, and that is going beyond Bangalore as well, right? We've working on the cluster seed fund for a, for a Hubli, Belgao, uh, for uh, Mangaluru and Mysuru. Uh, it's also supported by the fact that uh, programs like Elevate are fantastic signals to the market, right? 900 startups getting a 20 to 50 lakh grant uh, encourages early stage uh, investors to start looking at these startups in a much more serious way. So my sense is, despite the funding winter that we are in the midst of, uh, good ideas uh, with good entrepreneurs will always find capital here. Uh, I don't see that as a challenge. Yeah. And, and uh, something that strikes me before we go to the audience, um, to you, Kargeji, there's always, always a talk about beyond Bengaluru. What magical ingredients of success factors in Bengaluru can we copy for the Hubalis and Belgams for us to move, for us to think about, for companies to think about? What are those ingredients? Well, there is no guaranteed recipe for success. Like I said, we need to treat each of these sectors differently. We need to understand, do a deep dive, and see what works there. But 
what will work everywhere is if you give the right skill sets, educate right education, right skill sets, bring in incubation, bring in centers of uh, small centers of uh, excellence, bring in small centers of uh, uh, excellence for developing these entrepreneurship uh, uh, entrepreneurship spirit, then it leads to innovation. I cannot just go and force fit what. Uh, Bangalore ecosystem is into uh, Kalburgi or into uh, Belgavi. I need to nurture that. The, this is this uh, the Bangl uh, today Bangalore is the fourth largest technology cluster in the world. We are number eight in innovation in the world. It did not happen overnight. It took it three three decades, four decades, and it's very easy for people to say, oh, why can't it be replicated elsewhere? It cannot because it's taken 40 years. But yes, how can I reduce that 40 years uh, to 10 years in Mangalore, uh, 15 years in Kalburgi? That is what we need to do, and that will only happen through. Uh, education that will only happen through skill uh, development that will only happen through incubation that will only happen through centers of excellence then only we will think we can think about innovation that will lead to entrepreneurship otherwise it's going to be difficult and of course uh, capital about see the government is the only one who can take risk at that grand scale so like he said elevate is a program where we give 50 lakh up to 50 lakhs grant unnati we give it uh, for SCST entrepreneurs, 50 lakh grand. We give it Elevate Women, we give 50 lakh grants. For grassroots innovations, where you're actually solving the real life problem, we give 50 lakh grants. So combined, uh, the government of Karnataka itself has closed to around uh, 60, 70 crores, which is giving out as grant. Show me one other state that exactly. does this. Show me one other state that has so many centers of excellence, whether it is uh, fintech, animation, gaming, uh, uh, your automobile sector, Nobody has circular economy labs. Every, we, we are doing everything to ensure that uh, this ecosystem is replicated beyond Bengaluru also. Manu, just to make a, just to add to that point. See, especially this is very relevant here. What we need to do is to celebrate the spirit of entrepreneurship. It's not that things are not happening. It's happening, but we are not telling those stories uh, louder. Right? So how do we use platforms of the media to amplify stories of success that is coming out? Because that spurs the ecosystem. As an example, and you uh, know... The needs to give me more space. <laughs> exactly. All entrepreneurs more space as well, right? And not just from Bangalore. How do we celebrate these success stories from a, from a Kalburgi or from a, a Koppal? Uh, in fact, on that note, uh, we are very happy to share that in uh, December, Bangalore will be hosting the world's largest entrepreneurship festival. Right? And we are going to work across all the districts of Karnataka, pull in entrepreneurs from every district to come into Bangalore, share the success stories, shine the spotlight, and raise it to the raise the noise level to the next orbit. Right? So the, even the last 10 standard fail guy in a in a school must be thinking, okay, what is that success that I can go after? What is that innovation that I can do? Rather than saying, oh, nani yaru kelsa So how do you build that as a culture? See, what Madan did not tell you was that he's doing it with the government. <laughs> That's why people think we don't do anything. <laughs> Great. Corporate habits die hard. I have a timer in front of me and uh, we need to end on dot. So are there any questions to the panel from the audience? Yeah. One or two at max. Hello. Okay. Namaskara. So he's asking you to introduce yourself, your company yes. name and then. Okay. My name is Rajesh. I work in SAP Labs as a global customer uh, support manager as well as a CSR champion. Today, I represent even the Karnataka Civil Defense, okay? My question is very simple. I think this question is keep asking from last 10 years, beyond Bangalore perspective. Now, Manu, as you rightly said, after the COVID, many of these techie guys or talent, whatever you call it, are, no? they're allowed to work in their own hometowns, not to ready to come to Bangalore, because to take care of for their family, parents, whatever it may be. And I also really appreciate, Kargiji, you also mentioned that one, I'm ready to give that anything tomorrow if somebody comes to Chitapur. So last 10 years, we're asking the same thing. Can you please come and set up the centers in the Mysore, Hubli, Daun, Gere, Belgam, where it may be. Can you try to twist that approach in a different way? Hey, here is the ready place. I have a IT building, like 10,000 seats. Can you come and operate it here, just making your network? Madi Devi, sir, Adhanu Madi Devi. Gulbarga nal Kionix building ide, Hubli nal ide, Belgavi nal ide, Mangalore nal ide, Muru vare ekar ide. Yara dhuri idre heli. So how can you really push the IT industry? So now in the budget, 
we have announced a GCC policy as well. Okay. What we could, what we can try, is since now there's a huge influx of GCCs as well, with respect to services as well as uh, research and innovations that are happening, we can try this in one or two places where we have the Kionix uh, uh, buildings uh, that are available, where we say that two years, come and try out your 250, 300 or 500-seater uh, GCC over here, and if you want to expand, we will help you. That can, that definitely can be done in our uh, new policy that we announced uh, yesterday. But having said that, there are, there are more subsidies, more incentives, more schemes for uh, uh, companies and industries to invest outside Bengaluru. So you'll be quite surprised, Mangaluru, as of December, I think, has exported close to around 2,000 or 3,000 crores of IT uh, services export. So it's a work in progress. It's happening. It needs to happen at a faster scale. I, I even have to request you to save your question offline, gentlemen, with the mic. Yeah. So can, uh, can you save your question offline? We are out of time. Yeah. I just like to wind up looking at the time. Can you well, say I, it? I just need 30 seconds. Uh, myself, Zameer Nadav. I am the Joint Secretary from B Bangalore, Bangalore Apartment Federation. And I am also uh, Associate Director for AT&T Cyber Security Solutions. Uh, my question to Minister Sir is, Sir, being a, uh, Bangalore is the IT capital in India, there are a lot of cyber security frauds are happening. And we as IT leaders, how can we help government to create the awareness Across the bank, uh, across the Karnataka, and across the India. Uh, so yes, uh, that's a major uh, problem plaguing everybody. Yeah. And uh, Karnataka, uh, by uh, virtue of being uh, the tech capital for uh, India, cyber frauds also are high. Uh, as uh, we lose close to around one crore a day. Uh, so in 2022, 366 crores was lost to cyber fraud. This was only reported, exactly. and only 12 percent recovery happened. So we need to do two, three things. One is build a very strong awareness uh, awareness uh, aspect on cyber securities and cyber frauds. Number one, which we have tied up with uh, Meta, we have tied up with uh, True Caller, and we have tied up even with uh, Google for the same. Uh, number where we are going to uh, uh, schools, colleges, and we are uh, creating awareness on financial literacy so that you know they don't get uh, defrauded uh, very. Uh, uh, anytime soon. Uh, number two is we are also uh, we also run a, a center of excellence for cyber security called the CISEC along with the Indian Institute of Science where we are trying out new things every uh, now and then so that uh, we ensure that we are fu we are always future ready. So there are always the, uh, the cyber fraud is always two steps ahead of us whether it is economic offenses or whether it's cyber terrorism, cyber bullying or any kind of thing uh, that is happening. So now we will be getting it out of Indian Institute of Science and we will be partnering with uh, a larger uh, 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 audience of uh, private uh, uh, players as well. And we are also the first city, uh, first uh, state who has come up uh, with uh, a fake news and a misinformation uh, handling uh, unit as well. So it's a work in progress. So probably next year we'll be in a better position uh, to strengthen this entire thing. Thank you, sir. Lovely. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you so much. I think uh, uh, just to wind up the discussion, talent, capital, infrastructure, networks, most importantly, the entrepreneurial spirit in Bengaluru. Thanks for being a lovely audience, and uh, let's give the panel a big round. Thank you so much. Gentlemen, thank you so much. And before you leave, we have a small moment of coming your way. To give them away, I'd like to call on stage KV Subramanya, our associate editor here at Deccan Herald. Um, some lovely caricatures coming your way from Sajit Kumar. And um, yes, if I could request all of you to be in the center of the stage, please. <laughs>